Okay, everybody, Doc here. We are now at day 14, which is our last lesson day of the third week. Hard to believe tomorrow will be another exam. Um, and we are going to be three quarters of the way through. So, wow. So, here we go. We have the substitution rule today. And the substitution rule is a way of integrating whenever we have something that might look like this. At first, we're like, well, maybe some kind of product rule, but what you have to remember is that this is the result of something that was differentiated. So, what we need to do is say, well, we need to find the main part of this integral and then differentiate it to see what we have remaining. So what they call that is identifying your U. So identify U. So in this case, I'm looking here and I see this on the inside. And I notice if I differentiated this, I would get 2x, which is what this is out here. So my u then would be 1 plus x squared. Since that's my u, my du will be 2x. And now here's the biggest part of this problem is you're going to ask, well, I call it the big ask, the big ask. For this problem we say what do I need to do what do I need to do to what I have here 2x to get what I have under here which is also in this problem 2x and the answer to that question here is nothing. So there's no adjustment. So I have what I need here is my du when I have my u inside. So what that means is now I can say I need to integrate that u to the one half because that is to the one half power du. And when I integrate this, I'm going to have u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. And then, of course, plus c. So when I simplify, I'm going to invert multiply. So this flips over 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And then my final step would be going back and taking my u value and substituting it back in and I have 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves and of course plus c. And that's how I integrate using the substitution rule. Now of course it's not always going to be oh it's perfectly there so let's continue on and look at some other problems. Uh, that is actually your intro problem on page 330 so now let's take a look at example 1. Example one is x cubed cosine parentheses x to the fourth plus two dx. Now again, the first thing I need to do is identify what my u is. And since I see here is u to the fourth and over here is a u to the third, I can have a big hint here that this is my u. So my u value is x to the fourth plus two. My du value then would be four x cubed. So again, my question is, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to this four x cubed to get what I have underneath here, which is x cubed. So what do I need to do to this 4x cubed that I get to get what I have under the integral, which is x cubed? And I see that if I take 
1 fourth times 4x cubed, I will get what I need. So this becomes what we call the adjuster, or what I call the adjuster. And that then will go out into the front of my integral now because that's what I need to adjust my problem. And I have this du taken care of other than that. So now I am going to integrate my cosine u du. Now my derivative of sine is cosine, so my integral of cosine is sine. So when I go back, I'm just going to have 1 fourth sine of u plus c. And the last step, I need to take my u and substitute it back in. I have 1 fourth sine of x to the fourth plus 2 plus c. And that's my answer, okay? Alrighty, so that's example one. Let's move on. We're going to do lots of math today, lots of examples. It's my favorite kind of day when we're just doing some math. Example two. And I have 2x plus 1 to the 1 half dx. Hmm, so where is my u and where is my du? Well, it looks like this is raised to the 1 half power, so this looks like it's probably going to be my u. And when I take du of that, I will just get 2. Well, the number that I do have in here for du is 1. Okay, so since there's nothing there, it's just 1. So what do I need to do to 2 to get 1? What do I need to do to 2 to get 1? Well, I'm going to take 1 half times 2, and that will give me the 1 that's there. So again, this is my adjuster. So now I have 1 half u to the 1 half du. All right, I'm going to go ahead and integrate that. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, and this is 1 half, still is out front, plus c. When I invert and multiply, my 2's will reduce, and then I'm left with 1 third u to the 3 halves plus c. And finally, I'm going to plug back in for my u. I have 1 third 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. Now, you might ask, should we change this to be a uh, 2x plus 1 times the square root of 2x plus 1, which would be the simplified version in radical form. It depends on what you're going to do with it next. A lot of times we'll leave it this way because if we're going to continue to solve for something using this expression, then it's easier to leave it in that form. But just so we remember what that would look like, this would be 2x plus 1 times the square root of 2x plus 1 and then plus c. This is how you get 3 halves because this is 1 and 1 half. The 1 is here and this is your half. Okay? All right, example 3. Example 3, I have x over the square root of 1 minus 4x squared dx. Well, looks like this is probably my u. And my du then would be negative 8x. So I see I have an x here. So what do I do to this negative 8x to get x. Well, I'm going to multiply it by negative 1 eighth. So negative 1 eighth would then be my adjuster. 
So now I have negative 1 8 on the outside and in the inside if I make this U and bring it up top it's going to be U to the negative 1 half DU. Okay, so let it, let's continue to integrate this and um, when I add 1 I will have U to the positive 1 half over positive 1 half I have my negative 1 8 multiplied by that and then plus C. So if I invert and multiply, I have 2 over 1, so I'm going to have negative 1 fourth U to the 1 half plus C. And when I plug in my U value, down here I will finally have negative 1 fourth 1 minus 4 x squared to the 1 half plus c. Okay? And if you're following along we are now on um, page 332 getting ready to do example 4. Example four. All right, I'm going to integrate cosine 5x dx. Cosine 5x dx, example four. <clears throat> I take a look at this, I'm like, well, this looks like it might be my u. So my du would just be five. And the only number I have in front here is a 1. So again, I say, what do I do to my 5 to get 1? Well, I'm going to multiply by 1 fifth. So I'm going to add that adjuster up here, 1 fifth cosine of u du. And I remember that the derivative of sine is cosine, so the integral of cosine is sine. My one-fifth is still there, plus c. And then my final step is to substitute in my 5x. And there we go. That's example four. Okay, let's go to example five. We're going to integrate one plus x squared times x to the fifth. So we're going to star this one up because this one's a little bit tricky, tricky, tricky. Okay, so here we have x to the fifth. And it looks like in here, this would be my u, which means my du would be 2x. Now I have a problem because I have x to the fifth here, so I certainly don't have just an x. So I need to kind of rethink this problem and see here I have uh, the square root of 1 plus x squared. I could change x to the fifth to be x squared times x squared times x. And I probably should explain why I broke that down to x squared and x squared. And the reason I did that is when I look up here, I see that I can actually solve this for x squared. And if I did that, I'd have x squared is going to equal, subtract this over, u minus 1. Okay, piece of information that will be very helpful to me. So x squared is u minus 1. So that's why I broke the x to the fifth down to x squared, x squared. And then, of course, the x for this. So now this is what I'm going to take a look at here. I say, what am I doing to 2x to get x, well, I'm going to multiply it by 1 half. So my adjuster is 1 half. And then I still have the square root of u times what is x squared in u form? It is u minus 1 again, because we have two of those. Whoop, 
u minus 1. And then this is part of my du, so I don't need to put that there. I'm just going to put du. All right, yeah, this one's a little bit tricky. So now what I would do is multiply this out before I integrate it because I see I don't have any really high um, exponents here. So this is actually a binomial square. So this is u squared minus 2u plus 1 when we multiply it out. And I still have u to the 1 half in the front here. So now it's looking a little bit simpler, but I think I still need to bring this in before I integrate. So let's keep in mind that u squared is 4 over 2. So this will be u when I combine these 5 over 2 minus 2u. This is 2 over 2 plus 1 half is 3 over 2 plus and u to the one half. Now I have something that I can integrate using the opposite power rule. So here I have, um, whoop, I almost put x, so this is still u, u to the seven halves over seven halves minus 2 u to the, I'm adding 1, remember, 5 halves over 5 halves plus u to the add 1 again, 3 halves over 3 halves. And all of this is going to be multiplied by 1 half. I don't know why I put negative there, so I apologize for that. It's just positive 1 half. And this is, of course, plus C. So when I invert and multiply this, I flip this over. The 2 is going to reduce on each one. So I'll be left with 1 7th u to the 7 halves minus 1. Oh, we have another 2 here, though, so we got to be careful. So when I flip this over, I'm going to have, um, because I have 2 up here, and I flip this over, I'm going to have four fifths. So one of those will reduce. So I still have two fifths u to the five halves. And here, again, reducing, I'm going to have one third u to the three halves. And of course, plus c. All right, well, that is my. Um, that is my integral. So the final step I need to do is go back and substitute in my u up here for each one of these u values. So I have 1 7th times 1 plus x squared to the 7 halves minus 2 fifths times 1 plus x squared to the 5 halves plus 1 third times 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves plus c. And again, we can change these to radical form if we wanted to. We'd have to remember how to do that. This is 3 and 1 half, so I'm going to have 1 plus x squared cubed and then a square root of 1 plus x squared 1 seventh times that and continue across and do the same thing. Um, but normally in calc, when we are solving different problems, this is going to be the form we're going to leave it in because there'll be some other step that we need to do afterwards, OK? So star that one up. That one was a little bit crazy. We had to do an extra step up here to take care of this x to the fifth. All right, that's example five. Example six. All right, now we're going to look at some definite integrals. Example six. So I have my lower bound zero, my upper bound is four. I have the square root of two x plus one dx. And I do the same thing in the beginning is I'm going to identify my u. 
So I say u is 2x plus 1. Therefore, du is 2. All right. So the question is, what do I do to 2 to get 1? I multiply it by 1 half. So I have 1 half. 0 to 4, square root of u, du. Okay, now when I integrate this, this is, again, u to the 1 half, so I'm going to have u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. I still have my 1 half out front. And this time I don't have plus c because I have my upper and lower bounds of 0 and 4. So let's clean that up a little bit. I'm going to invert, multiply, the twos will reduce, and I will have one-third u to the three halves, and again, zero to four. Now, uh, zero to four, as long as you are going to substitute back in the u, you'll see there's going to be another method we're going to look at here in a little bit too that can be helpful. So we have 2x plus 1 and that's to the 3 halves and now we have 0 and 4. So let's go ahead and um, solve that. I'm going to substitute in my 4 values and then I'm going to substitute in my 0 values. And when I do that, when I substitute in my 4 values, I'll have 9 and then I'm going to have uh, the square root of 9 cubed. So that will end up being 27 over 3 minus here I have 0 in, which means I'm going to have 1 to the 3 halves. So that will be negative 1 third. And when I combine, I get 26 over 3, which is the answer to my problem. Now let's see if they have a, they don't. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't have a graph here for that one. All right. Let's take a look at, um, example six. Example six. All right, example six. Actually, that was example six. Okay, example seven. Example seven, we now have the integral of lower bound one, upper bound two, dx over three minus five x quantity squared. Okay. So now let's take a look at our u. We can take a look at the inside and we say that u looks as if it would be 3 minus 5x. And when I take du, I will get negative 5. So I don't have any other constant here. So again, negative 5 times what? Negative 1 fifth will give me what is there, which is 1. So this is my adjuster. So I have negative one-fifth upper and lower bounds, and I have u to the negative two du. Now I'm going to integrate that. So when I do, I will have u to the negative one over negative one. There's still my negative one-fifth out front. And I'm going to go ahead and write my upper and lower bounds in here, 1 and 2. And let's clean this up much. So let's 1 over 5u, upper and lower bounds. Now, if I leave this as u, there's a way that I can change my upper and lower bounds from terms of x, which is what this is actually in here. This is still terms of x. Why is it terms of x? because this is where it's defined in terms of x, I can change those numbers to be in terms of u. And all I have to do is take my 3 minus 5x, 
and substitute in my upper and lower bound. So let's put in my upper bound first. My upper bound will be 3 minus 10, 5 times 2. So that's going to give me negative 7. That's my new upper bound. And let's put in the lower bound. 3 minus, I'm going to plug 1 in here. So it's going to be 3 minus 5. And that will give me a new lower bound of negative 2. So instead of going back and substituting this in and then putting those values in, which you could still do, sometimes this might be pretty complicated, so you may want to find a new upper and lower bound and just plug in for you your values. So now I have 1 over 5 times negative 7, which is negative 1 35th, plus... Well, actually, it's going to be minus a negative, so minus negative one-tenth, so it's going to end up being plus one-tenth. And when I simplify that, you can remember the easy little fraction trick of multiplying. You have negative 10 plus 35 over 350, and that would be 25 over 350. And any time I reduce and I have 25, I think of quarters, so there's one quarter and 25 cents, and there's 14 quarters and $3.50, and to me, that's just the way my brain works, and sometimes if we change things to money, it's easier. It's kind of weird. Okay, so there we go. That is example seven. Now let's talk a little bit about symmetry before we go on to example eight. Okay, so there's some laws of symmetry that we can use that can help us to simplify integrals. First, let's review. If I have f to the negative x and that's equal to f of x, that tells me that I have an even function. And if I have an even function and I have my values from negative a to a, of f of x and I integrate it, my result is just going to be 2 times whatever my 0 to a value is of f of x dx. So this is like a simplification tool that we can use sometimes if we notice that our values are from negative a to a. If we notice it's an even function, we can just do from 0 to a. And why would we want to do that? Well, a lot of times it's a lot easier to substitute in the value 0 once we integrate, so that can be much simpler. Now, if I have an odd function, negative f of negative x equals negative f of x, then we know that's an odd function. And it's really nice when we recognize this because when we do recognize that I have negative a to a of f of x and it's an odd function, I get 0 because they end up canceling out. So this is for even, this is for odd, and let's see if we can find a couple things that will help us use those tools. Example 8. I have f of x equaling x to the 6th plus 1. Well, I should notice that it is an even function. If I plugged in negative x, I would get f of x. So it is an even function. And I'm asked to examine this from negative 2 to 2. And I realize it's an even function, and I am checking it from negative 2 to 2. So what I can do is I can simplify that and say I'm just going to take 2 times 0 to 2 of x to the 6 plus 1 dx. And now when I integrate it, I have x to the 7th over 7 plus x. I still have my 2 out front. And I am going to evaluate that 
with the upper lower bound of 2 and 0. So when I do this and I multiply, I will get 2 times 128 over 7 plus 2. And when I plug in my zeros, it wipes it out. So again, another good reason uh, to use this is it takes care of the second part and it simplifies it a little bit for me and I will end up getting 284 over 7. Okay? All right. And believe it or not, we are at our last example. Let's look at example 9. Example 9, I have f of x equals tangent of x over 1 plus x squared plus 4. And I notice here that this, oh, not x, not 4, x to the 4th, sorry, x to the 4th. Make sure I wrote that down correctly now. Yes, okay, so... What I discover here is because of the tangent that's on top, even though it appears it might be an even function, it ends up being an odd function because if I put f of negative x in, I will get negative f of x. Okay? So knowing that it is, and I am going to evaluate it from negative 1 to 1 of tangent x over 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth, dx, I said, wait a minute, that means that I can just take this value and just say it's equal to zero, and I'm done. Didn't have to do anything. So why was I able to do that? I was able to do that because this is an odd function, and it's an odd function going from negative 1 to 1, as long as these numbers are the same, uh, same but opposite, so negative a to a, then I know this is odd, then my result is going to be zero. And can you believe it? That is the end of section 4-5. And um, I will see you for next week's lesson starting in chapter 5. All right, take care and peace out.